everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Mercs 2.0. Um, this is a game that I actually played the initial version of, Mercs 1.0, right here. Uh, when it first came out, I actually used to do a little bit of helping out, right in the FAQs and stuff for the game. Uh, and it's a game near and dear to me. Uh, Keith and um, Brian have basically been in the game design industry for a long time. If you used to read strategy guides for games like Diablo, they probably helped make them. They were like big dudes in the video game strategy design or strategy game like uh, strategy guide design industry, uh, and they are both big fans of tabletop games. They've got a couple of really successful ones under their belts now. They got Myth, which has been a big dungeon crawling game. It's done a couple of Kickstarters, uh, but their first their first love their first flagship game was a game called Mercs. Um, and the whole idea behind this game was it's basically Blade Runner future. Meg corporations have taken over the world, and that's had of course all the repercussions of those things happening each one kind of reflects where it comes from so like the ccc is like the north american corporation and they kind of represent those values and how those people live uh the chemvar are from south america you've got the safadu from africa um you've got the fcc which you're playing which is actually free corporate control uh, and they live in the lost margin which is basically because of a rounding error in a mega corporation this whole stretch of eastern europe became just like uninhabitable <laughs> <laughs> so the unintended consequences of like having a bad year, they wrote off all these people in this country and they live like low techs now in the ruins. Um, and then the USCR, which is the big Soviet state and mega corporation. Um, there's other corporations too, the ISS, the GCC, all kinds of other ones that have been um, released since the Kickstarter actually went through, which is a recon Kickstarter, which had the Nurks 2.0 stuff in it. Uh, but I'm painting anything about, I've got all my original metal teams. Nathan picked up the new plastic team for the FCC. Yep. I'm going to show you guys how to play with that. Um, it's a bit like overwatch the miniature game you do team building it's points free doesn't use a point system at all uh, each team has 10 models typically to choose from and you just build the roster for the mission you're trying to do so uh you don't worry about points you just pick five guys and put them on a team everybody really does fulfill a role and you pick the models for the team that you like now the mercs teams are elite corporate reconnaissance like reconnaissance units open warfare is kind of frowned upon now it's a like infinity um and you're basically fighting like covert actions and small scale things. So we're going to be fighting the Lost Mars right now. The USCR is going to be taking on some dirty, dirty milling freedom fighters. One of whom is still wearing his office uniform. He has a tie tied around his head and a Molotov cocktail and AK-47. He's literally like just come from the office when everything collapsed. He's my favorite. Um, yeah, and we'll show you the table. We'll walk you through the basic core mechanics of the game. It's pretty simple, um, but it's got a lot of like depth and maneuvering and stuff. And we'll get started. Here's the big, beautiful Mercs 2.0 rulebook. Um, of course, beautifully laid out. You can see the, the background these guys have in book design. Uh, all the art done by Keith. Um, all the rules writing done by Brian. Great duo for doing this stuff. Um, it has a wonderful timeline of how the Mercs world comes to be. Short stories in it as well. There's actually a novel, The Worker's Heart, that came with the Kickstarter. It's pretty cool. And then a synopsis, of course, what you need. You need Mercs team. The new box sets like Nathan has comes with the whole 10-man team. I have the classic box set, which was a five-man team plus an extra model, um, but I've got the other models in plastic that I'll paint out to my teams later on. Counter advice, or sorry, glossary of what you need. Uh, it's played on a two by three gaming area. They have some downloadable mats that are pretty cool. Um, and then of course you need some terrain. You should have blocked line of sight from one side of the zones to the other uh, to give yourself a good sort of like a bunch of cover moving through as the two teams go to fight each other. What's new in Mercs 2.0? This is a great section. I hope that every game company that writes a new edition of a rule book actually thinks about doing this in the future. It's only about two pages, sorry, one page, well, yeah, it's two pages, one, one flip. Um, but it gives you a basic overview of what the key mechanic changes are. So what's new in the, the, the game? Cards have changed. Uh, so I've actually got the previous USCR cards right here. You can see they don't have any information on the back, only on the front. So the sniper card here, um, quite a bit different from the current sniper card. You get a full explanation of all the rules on the back, uh, and you get all of the other relevant information on the front. So your, your in-game information, such as your stats, that's your, your uh, initiative rating, which is a change from the reaction system. The next one is your, oh, sorry, actual reaction. Then you've got your courage, You've got your movement points, how many movement you do, your blood, which is your hit points, your armor, um, your, uh, what you call it, armor failure. So what do you have to roll to, uh, to have your armor failure go to? And then your interact, so what you use to interact with things. Change there. They've also changed up um, the way the weapon profiles are on the front too. Uh, and every time it gives you an example of a change, it gives you the page number of the full description. So for instance, the card changes are on page 26. 
uh, which is the flip over that we just looked at. Initiative modifier, this is a new thing. It used to be that your reaction broke ties when you roll for initiative. Now you actually have a stat at the top here that adds to your initiative roll. So what happens is during the game, you're gonna see us reroll a D10 for every single model, and that gives us our activation order for all the models during the turn, and you break ties uh, so you add to the dice roll, obviously, with your thing, and then you break ties by are you plus or minus modifiers. And then finally, it's reaction for further ties, and then there's a process for anything after that. But that should be a super corner case when anyone's tied at that point. Uh, moving within the card, this is a new thing. It used to be that when you placed cards, you would place the initial card anywhere in your front arc, right? So that center point had to be anywhere in your front 180. And then you could move the miniature to any of these new cards, basically retaining your facing. So you have to stay the same place and move to any of these new points. Um, you can do it that way or you can move anywhere inside the card now as well. So it's just anywhere inside the cards where you place the model. Uh, the other half is uh, you don't have to use cards. You can just move four inches. That's how we're going to play it. We're not going to play with 2D terrain, so we're not even going to use the movement template. See you later. This will just get used for blast and stuff. Uh, we're going to just use 4-inch movement values for all your movement points. Further changes, uh, elevation ratings. You Instead of having weirdly assigned numbers, it's just every card height or roughly three inches in elevation rating and you just measure heights with the card to see if you can go up or down a level. Uh, firing numbers have all gotten a little bit easier uh, to make the game a little bit more deadly uh, and then flanking has also gotten more simple because you don't have to be engaged in melee. To save space in the cards a lot of the things that used to be fully described in the old cards are now keywords such as attack and move. They're fully described inside the rule books or some universal special rules. Uh, medium range now has a penalty to hit at, so it's uh, added two official terms of the two card length distance as a minus one modifier to attack. And then melee combat, it's, it's just, the syllabus is melee combat makes more sense now. <laughs> and you can move and attack in melee. Used to be only one guy in the game could do that, which is the Kembar Assassin. Now you can just move and fight. Yay! Uh, and then finally suppression and overwatch are cool, but they have a downtime. So you can go on to suppression, you can go on overwatch, uh, but if you do so, um, if you use it during the following turn, it basically has to cool off before you can use it again. See, because you can send someone out to bait suppression and then it goes into cooldown mode and the next guy it won't get shot. But then after that, it's cooled down and it's ready to go again. So you can do sort of like some real life tactics in with overwatch, where you send out basically the canary to go eat the bullets and then he comes back and the next guy to go can actually be okay. So that was great. I really wish other companies would do this where they just give you some basic like core mechanic changes and tell you where to look because this is a great two pages for people to play the game before to get caught up in what's new. Let's talk about core mechanics. We went through uh, and showed you the reference card already, but we'll actually talk about what all that stuff means. So um, let's use our friendly neighborhood sniper yet again from the USCR, uh, and he's got some pretty simple stats. He's got... So up top here, plus one to his initiative roll, so plus one to his dice rolls, a reaction of four. That's actually your uh, to hit model, uh, number as well in melee. You use reaction for melee combat. Um, over here, he's got his, uh, what should we call it? His, his courage value for certain effects. His movement is two, can take three hit points in damage. His armor rating of two, you have to equal or beat that with your weapon strength to do damage, otherwise you're just causing armor failure checks. His armor failure, which is what he has to roll higher than, equal to or higher than to check his armor, make sure it doesn't break. Um, and then uh, if you have a rating of zero there, you're just not wearing armor, so your armor can't break. So dudes who don't have super advanced armor, very often they'll take damage really easily, but they just, they don't care about armor breaking. And then finally his interact for like pushing buttons and dealing with objectives. You got your kit, and your kit is usually also described on the back. So for instance, he's got two keywords on his kit, aim, he can wait for a round to get plus two to his attack rolls, and then pinned, if his attack is successful, the target is unable to move until an interact check is passed, so he has to actually pull out the pin. He fires giant anchors from that sniper rifle, which is pretty cool, that lock people in place. Uh, you can still stop to cover but you can't move um, and he's got that which is a sniper rifle and he's got also a pistol so this anchor gun it's uh, got stat lines it can be used in melee uh, any red ranges basically are available to him it can be used at short range is one card length so four inches medium range eight inches two card lengths and long range is the rest of the table uh, and there's basically modifiers for hitting at those areas it rolls 1d10 to hit, it needs a 4 or better to hit, uh, basically without modifiers. It does 1 damage, so very often it won't hurt people, but it will pin them uh, and force armor checks. Then the pistol, also 1d10 to hit, 4 to hit, 1 damage, and he can aim it to make it better. It's good in base to base, so it can be used in melee, um, and it's also good at short range, which is up to a base length. Everyone also has personal abilities. These are what make you a cool Mercs team member. He has crack shot, he can just auto hit once per game with his gun. He's just really, really good at shooting. And he's also lucky he can negate one success against himself per game as well. So he's got two sort of like auto rules that make the sniper very durable and he's a cool sort of like one-off fighting model. 
Team selection's important. I got a bunch of guys here. This is my Commissar. He's got an ice grenade launcher and an assault rifle. He's really heavily armed, but he's kind of slow. My Monkey Wrench, he helps fix people's armor when it breaks. My Medic, he helps fix people's organs falling out when they break. Uh, my Behemoth, which is a dude in like the biggest powered suit ever made with dual H or HMGs on his shoulders and a giant murder hammer. Uh, he's real slow. He can only move once per turn, but he's got some, uh, some really super awesome... Um, uh, like offensive capabilities. He also doesn't have to set and rip. A lot of guys who are big guns can't move and fire. This guy can move and fire his guns. Or sorry, he can't move and fire his guns. He can snap and fire his guns without having to set first. Uh, so he's really good at fighting. We've got this guy over here, the booster. He's my entry man kicking in doors, as you can see here with a, a rifle. We've got the sniper, as I described before. Um, and that's the six guys I have available to me. The guys I don't have painted um, are a couple of extra guys. There's the heavy which is like an LMG guy, the Pathfinder, the Engineer, and the Gunner, which is like a shotgun up closer to entry, dude. But I'll paint them later. Um, and then I've got my corporate abilities. Corporate abilities aren't printed on any individual's cards, they're just things you already always have. We're dense, if you're strength one when you hit us, we just don't make armor checks, because our armor is so heavy. And intimidating, enemy targets that need to make a courage roll have their dice reduced by one. So the game happens in three phases. The initiative phase, and we're going to show you the three phases of the game, just pulling a couple models out to give you a basic overview. The action phase, where you do stuff, and the refresh phase, where everybody starts and, and basically does all their maintenance stuff. So I'm just use my monkey wrench. You're going to use your that house member. There? Just house member, just regular dude. Uh, deploy down a line of sight of each other, which is typical for the game. Uh, and we roll off initiative. So the first thing you do is you roll a d10, and you add your initiative modifier. So I got a three plus... Where's my monkey ranch? Three plus two, so he goes to a five. I got a four, minus nothing. All right, so he's gonna attack first. Now the action phase, everybody gets to take an action. There's three actions in the game. There's move, act, and hold. Act is just like a catch-all for all the things you can do. Shoot your gun, use a medical kit. He's got things like his repair kit where you can monkey reach guys in base to base. Um, and he can act and move when he does it as well, which is pretty cool. So his thing is, uh, he may choose to act and move in any order. This allows him to use in any consumable item while moving. So he can move into base space with somebody and do his repair. And then basically discard one repair kit to get rid of a, uh, he's got three of them to get rid of a broken armor on a guy. Um, he's got back off. Normally, you can only spend, uh, uh, what should we call it? You can only spend one action point to move backwards. Your movement gets halved when you do it. He's got a thing where he gets hit by a melee attack or range attack. He can just move away. Last one's move your ass after inflicting a blood. He just gets an MP. For no reason, he can just move. So if he shoots somebody, he gets to move afterwards, which is pretty super cool. So um, I can choose to move, uh, I can choose to act, which is to fire, but I can't see you, obviously. Uh, or I can choose to hold. If I hold, I get plus two to next turn's initiative, um, or whatever other penalties I can get from holding, like aiming and stuff like that for other guns. I'm not gonna do that though, I'm just gonna move. Uh, I'm gonna move four inches, move four inches, uh, and place myself through the window. Over to here. And now I'm going to show you an important rule, which is called snap to cover. Everybody gets a free 30 millimeter movement, basically an inch movement, uh, at the end of every turn. And they can do it before or after their move. They can do it in combination with any other skill. I'm going to use it to get into this building here and hide in the window. Now, snap to cover re represents the fact that you can duck and roll and move a little bit each turn when you're not concentrating on moving. But it means that I've got myself some cover. I've moved into this building. And if you come out next turn, if I get initiative, I'll be able to see you. Acted now, it's back over to you. Your initiative four, which means you get to go next and you can move, act, uh, or even if you wanted to, snap to cover along that wall and take a shot at me. Using a snap to cover, you can also slide along walls. You just need to slide out and stay in cover, and there you go. Uh, and he'll be able to take a shot into my wrench who can see you uh, and you can see him. A semi auto means you get two D10s. It's good, medium, and long, and short. Um, and he's got the attack and move rule too. You didn't need to use it though, because it actually makes it harder for you to hit me. So it's better to snap and move in this case. Um, needs to hit on a six plus, does two damage, uh, and we have to apply any appropriate penalties here. So you're not within eight, which means you're not within two cards. So you're at long range, and I am in cover. He needs a six to hit normally, and the uh, order of operations for making an attack is you roll your D10, so roll your two D10s, and we'll apply all the modifiers. So you got a four and a one. So you are at long range, so no modifiers for that. As medium and short go down, it gets easier. Uh, and I am in cover, which is weak cover. Strong cover means I'm behind a wall and can't be seen at all, but certain guns can actually shoot through walls. So that's why the minus three is there. I'm not in no cover, um, so you'd be minus one total. So this goes to zero, which means it misses, and this goes to three. We compare that to the sixes that you need, uh, and that's nothing. You actually go up one again, though, because of heroic. You get all your dice rolls by plus one at medium and long ranges from his team measures. So as long as you're far away from guys, um, you get a bonus to all your hits. So this goes back up to one, this goes back to four, but now one is the six that you need. 
and that means you spray some bullets and the poor team member basically just gets his wall shot up and not hit. So then we go back, we go to the refresh step, and it's the refresh phase, check for victory, see if somebody's won from the scenario. Special actions, there's certain things that happen um, based on victory points or the scenario setup. They could happen then. Status conditions, things like smoke, toxin, um, they get taken off or applied and then clean up. You clean up your cards and get ready to do a new turn. So we're gonna basically just go right to the new initiative phase because we've done all that stuff. I get a seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 10. So you need to go first mm -hmm. and you get to act. Uh, same shots again. You're plus one, minus one, needing sixes. And you got a 10. So 10 hits. Uh, and that means that he will have the armor of two compared to your weapon strength of also two. That means he takes a blood because it is equal or beating his armor. And he has to make an armor failure roll. Now the armor failure roll is this number right here. It's a five plus. And if he fails it, he's minus two movement points. So he can only really snap to cover, um, and he's certain effects that happen based on his like armor being active. Like if he was in another team, like the Chemvar, they have thermoptic camouflage, it would shut down. Uh, so he has to roll a die right now and see what he gets. The five up, he's happy. Nope, so his armor's broken now, and that means he's going to be unable to move because his armor's shutting down around him, all the servos and gears are done off, uh, until he repairs it. So it's his activation now, um, and he's going to try and do something. Uh, he could just shoot you though still, if he wants, or... You're also going to snap with a cover, so never mind, I actually won't start my turn yet because my armor's broken. You're going to use your second half because you can snap and act in any order to get a line of sight so I can't even see you. So I'm going to have to snap as well. I'm just going to snap to this window over here so I can see you partly. Whoop. My armor's still broken. I'm actually going to try and repair my armor because my armor drops down by one as well um, instead of shooting you this turn. And if I can, so it's again on a five plus. I don't, I fail it, uh, my armor stays broke. Now, instead of doing that, I could have just armor kitted myself, because I am a monkey wrench and not a repair kit, and not had to roll, but that's fine. Back to the initiative phase. So we go back and forth like this until one of us is dead, um, or the, uh, the the mission objectives are done when the refresh phase, we check victory conditions. But we're just gonna set up a game now and start you through so you can see what the actual gameplay is like. Uh, we're gonna pick the basic mission, and that's called Conflict. It's for two to ten players, uh, two sides fielding five mercs each. So this is actually just as fun a game when you're each playing with a guy, if you had ten people playing, because you can play it as like a party game as well, or a, a convention game. Um, or you knew what we're doing, which is two players fielding five guys. Uh, special setup, there's none. Last make on standing. Uh, so last guy alive, basically, is the winner. Uh, use all the rules, there's no victory conditions, and it's just a straight up fight. So we roll off to see who deploys first. Uh, we pick our teams, actually before that. Uh, and we deploy five models on our team anywhere we want within one card length or three, sorry, one card half or three inches of the deployment edge. My team for this game is going to be the Commissar here with the helmet stripe, the monkey wrench you guys saw before, the behemoth in his big suit, um, the medic over here with his medi bag, and then the sniper. That's my five man team. So I've got two ways to repair armor breaks and health. I've got the behemoth for some big guns, the sniper to pin people in place, and the Commissar with his freeze gun. And here's Nathan's five man team. What do we got? So we got the house master, house member, the Bowden, which is like a sniper, yep. the boomer, and the saboteur. Saboteur. So saboteur is good at throwing a Molotov and shoot some guns. The boomer's got a grenade launcher. Um, the uh, master has a semi-auto and has some caltrops, laser caltrops. She can make an area of ground dangerous. Then we've got the house sign member, who's just a He's moving fire doer and the Bedouin who's got a sniper rifle. Nice off right now for conflict. This is to the death to see who deploys first. I got a nine. You got a 10, so you can make me deploy first if you want. Yeah, go for it. All right, I'll pick this side and deploy. Side and deploy, we got Big B, the Sniper, my Commissar, Monkey Wrench, and Medic over here. The Lost Marge is being defended by the Boomer, Zabatur, Housemaster, Bedouin, and the House Member. So we're all deployed right now. We're going to show you and roll in advanced maneuvers, like things like Bounding, Suppression, and Overwatch as we play the game, uh, and introduce all of the card members as well. So first things first, initiative step, we roll a D20, or D10 for everybody, and then modify them. Oops. And a couple of nines and tens. We modify everybody, so this guy's gonna go to three. That guy actually goes to one. I need to get my lefts and rights right. The, these are all minuses. So he goes to one. Uh, and then from there, uh, we've got the sniper at two, the wrench at five, the behemoth at nine, and the medic at nine as well. So I go nine, nine, actually, sorry, be tied this way. Behemoth would go first, medic would go second. He's at negative zero and he's at negative one. And then wrench, sniper, and commissar. You got house master at nine, uh, eight for the Bedouin, Zabatours at five, members at five, and the boomers at zero, because of minus two. Right, so I got nine minus zero is my first. You've got nine. Minus zero. All right, so if you have to reaction, my reaction's three. Minus six. All right, so you're going first with the house master. House master, yep. 
She's just gonna make a move yep. action. Yep. She's gonna move four, snap to cover. And she has two MP or one MP? Two. But she'll she do the one? Okay. Yep. Behemoth's gonna go. He's gonna bound off the Commissar. Uh, so he gains a bounding token. And what that means is he activates directly after the Commissar, but he gets plus one movement point. You can end up with a whole stack of guys bounding after a low modified guy. What are you? Uh, I've gone my nine. All right. So I have nine minus one is my next one. So my medic is also going to bound, and he'll bound off of the commissar as well. And then it goes over to your eight, which is going to be Bedouin. the Bedouin. Yep. He's just going to snap. Okay, take a shot. Yeah, he'll take a shot at your second guy there. Who, this guy? One, one this one, the one that you opened. Okay, cool. Yep. You minus one for the obstructions in the way, uh, and you're within card range of your boss, yep, four so inches, so you get plus one for the leadership bonus. I can but you get a reroll. Yeah, I can reroll. Okay. So, moving on fours normally. That's a 10, that'll hit. What's the strength? Two. Strength two, so the medic's gonna take it to uh, injury, so blood, and then make an armor fail check. Armor on the medic is going to be five plus. They pass, even blooded. Now I have to make a courage roll. So uh, I'm down to five. Uh, mine's minus two. Mine's five at minus one. All right, so you get to go first. Okay. Um, and that's gonna be your Zabatur. Yeah, actually, sorry, it'll be the member first because he's five at minus zero. Oh, okay, great. Sorry. So you mean to do two of them in a row, basically? Yeah. So he's got how many move points? He has two. So he's make a move action? Yep. So he can, can move, move eight. Uh, because of my house trait, I can move through soft cover, which is sure can. everything. Sure can. Yep. And Anything that's not taller than your silhouette, so you just move. walk over it. And then he will snap to cover there, and that's all he's going to go for now. Okay. There he goes. Yep. Next will be my saboteur. He has a move of three. So he's going to move four, eight, and then 12. Snap into cover there. Mr. Monkey Ranch is going to go, and he's the one that's been shot, sorry. Uh, he's going to take a walk. Uh, he moves 2 MP, so he's going to move 4. Uh, you know what? No, he's going to bound? Yeah, he's going to bound, actually. He's going to bound off of the uh, Commissar as well. Next one's 0, so my Sniper's going to go. Uh, and he is going to move, so he gets 2 moves. He's going to move 4 to here. And then he's going to move 4 again this corner is just gonna snap so you can see stuff now it's important that you have your facing uh, in the front 180 because you have 180 arcs in this game or, yeah your front arc is 90 degrees uh, and it's divided up by 180 left right for your flanks that's the commissar and then everybody bounds so the commissar is gonna go um, and he has one MP so he's gonna get to move once and then snap but he's not gonna quite make it so he's gonna move forward to here and be done because he has no one to bound to because he had the lowest roll uh, that's going to be Behemoth. He's going to get 2 MP for bounding. He's going to go 1. And then he's going to go 2 and then snap to cover. Like that. And it's going to be the wrench. He's going to move, move. So he's going to go 4. He can actually go 3 this time. He's going to go 1 to here. 2 to here. And then 3. And just actually snap to cover. That he'll move out actually because he can snap and fire. So he's gonna move three to there. And the medic goes, his blood goes with him. He's gonna be able to move three as well. So four takes him to here. Four is gonna take him to here. Yeah, go over to there. And then four again is gonna take him this way. For you, your zero guys, Mr. Boomer. Yep, he's gonna he's got three moves, so he's gonna move four. 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 Forged there, yep. Yep. Looks That's good. Fun. That's turn. Everyone's acted, so it's new initiative step, turn two. So after modifiers, we go Behemoth at nine, Medic at six, Snipers and Wrenches at three, and then Commissar at zero. We've got the member at ten, the Bedouin at seven, the Saboteur at six, and the Master and Boomer both at two. Both at two. All right. So I've got nine, which means Big B goes first. You got a ten. Sorry for the house member. I forgot. So he gets to go first. Yeah. So he's going to move, move. Looks good. Four. And he will snap to the it's Big B's turn. He's just going to snap, and he's going to snap back like this. And then he's going to fire his murder gun. Not going to have line of fire into the Zabatur, but the murder gun shoots a T, which is basically short range, it's only straight ahead. And then it's an 8-inch line. <laughs> it goes back like that. Whoop! Infinitely long. So it's going to hit the Boomer, the Housemaster, and the Bedouin. This is, whoops, that's the wrong guy. The firing diagram is uh, like that, and it just goes off into infinity. So... Um, it is set and rip. Uh, I basically have the included plus one to hit my thing. So it's normally hitting on eights, it hits on sevens because of his thing. 
You're in cover, so I'm minus one for all of these. I'm hitting on eights again. This guy takes three dice for the shots. Uh, so the boomer, three dice. Hit on eights, nothing. Uh, the house master, there's one. Damage three, so she'll take a blood. She has to make an armor check. What's her armor rating? Five. All right, it's so five up. No, her armor's broke. Into your Bedouin, whose armor's zero, but it means his armor can't break, which is cool. And his hit, hit on eights as well. And one, sticks of blood. He's got four blood though. He's actually super hard to kill because he has no armor. Big B done. We'll see the wrench. Yep. So this Bedouin has rinse and repeat. If he attacks the same target as last round, he increases attack ball, attack roll by one and weapon strength. Nice, one. you're gonna shoot Mr. Le, um, monkey wrench? Yep. Sounds good. One die, fours, so modify after. So I get plus one for rinse and repeat, yep. minus one for cover. Yep. Uh, long range is nothing. So. Nope. Hit on four. Yep. So you're good. Do uh, what's the strength? Three. So it'll do a blood. One armor check. His arm's broke. Ouch. Uh, so that was your seven. My next is a six. Yours is a six as well. Mine's at minus one. Same here. All right. So my reaction's five. Minus four. So here we go. All right. So I get to go first. So we're gonna snap to cover uh, into him, uh, and then we're gonna spend one of our med kits to heal him for two blood. We still have the move and act ability on the med kits. So we could actually move while we do this, which means I can move two. I'm actually gonna move. So I'm gonna go four over to here, and then I'm gonna go four again over to here, and be done. Here's Saboteur. Yep, Saboteur, he has a move of three. He's going to- Get his firebomb on, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna walk through cover, so four, four, and four. Oh jeez. Right, it's Mr. Sniper's time. Uh, he's got a three. Your last two are twos. So the sniper's going to take a shot into your boomer. He has the ability to just hit once per game, or he can hit on a uh, four plus. I just want to hit once. I'm just gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you on a map. I'm gonna spend my crack shot and hit your boomer. It's damage one. Is he armor one or armor two? Armor one. Yeah, so he's gonna take a blood uh, and then make an armor check. Armor six. Nope, so his armor's broke and he's pinned. So he's got the anchor on him now, which means he has to do an interact action on it to get it off so he can make it. I'm gonna snap, and I'm gonna actually snap, I think, over towards this crate. Nah, it's too far away, so I'm just gonna snap along the wall. Like so. Wrench is gonna go. He's gonna be initiative three as well, so he gets to go before your twos. Um, and I think he's just gonna shoot. I'm gonna snap to cover. Just whoops, moving my 30 mil so I can move out to here. I can still snap even when I'm no movement points, uh, which is basically just rolling around. So I can see through the windows, your house master. And I'm gonna take a shot. So it's two shots hitting on sevens. Sixes normally uh, go to sevens because of the cover in the way. And that'll do it, that's a blood. I have an ability called movie ass. As I do a blood, I get a free move. Uh, and I'm gonna use that to move over back here, a line of fire I think. Oh, well, there's a guy there. Ooh, bad. Oh, it's all bad. Uh, we're gonna move back, like so. Oh, I can't move, I'm minus one movement. Just gonna go. Your guy didn't end up moving at all? No, nope. so like he shoot back for sure. Two shots, sixes normally. Sevens. Sevens, uh, because of her ability leadership, she can reroll one of her dice, so both hit. Cool, two blood. Can I interact, take the pin out with the boomer? Yeah. Interact is five. Nope, it's a nope. four. Uh, and then, uh, it's over to me with my zero, and that's gonna be the Commissar. Just gonna shoot your Zapatour with him. I got two shots, hitting on sixes normally. You're in cover for sevens. Let's see if I hit, plus one to hit, uh, cause of my leadership. Uh, it's a nine, it'll hit you. Blood, and then armor check. Armor is? Uh, on, sorry. On the boot, uh, on the Zapatour? Zapatour, uh, armor zero. Oh, so he can't actually break, he's just wearing pants. It's round for me and round for you, so on a new initiative. Uh, let's see who's going first. All right, my highest is a seven with the Commissar, and then it's gonna be six with the wrench, uh, three with the Medic, two with the Behemoth, and the Sniper's going last at zero. You got Master and the Member both at six, the Bedouin at four, the Saboteur at three, and the Boomer as well at three. Oh man, so I'm gonna get two of these, maybe, one before anybody else, which is the leader here, and let's see where we get to. I'm gonna shoot the Commissar uh, into Mr. Saboteur. Saboteur, because we gotta do it. Minus one for cover, plus one for range. And minus one because he is a civilian. Oh, we don't want to shoot civilians. That no. makes sense. Well, let's see if we can get you. Goes to sevens net. I get a two and a two, so nothing. In range snap to cover, so I can't move, and that's Commissar done. Six is at minus zero, yeah. uh, and that means, what about your member? 
Uh, he's at minus zero as well. Okay, so they can both go in any order you want. Yeah, so Master will go. I'm sorry, it'd be my reaction, actually. What's the reaction on the, the oh, other uh, guy? Four on the Master, six on the member, so the member goes first. Member goes first, yeah. Okay. Gonna snap out? Yeah, member will snap to there. I think that gives okay. him a line. Ooh, for sure, yeah, yeah, you can see me through the windows. Yep, you will take his shots uh, because, I'm gonna measure this here. Yeah. He is long range away from any yeah. of his members. He, he gets, gets plus one to hit. Because he's yep. got the heroic special roll. So he's a plus one, minus one for cover. So he's just straight dicing. Yep, so eight sixes. Double hits. Uh, what's strength? Two. I think that's going to kill him. He's out. Blah. Highest master gets to go. Yep. She'll shoot your guy in cover there. Can shoot the medic? Yep. All right. So, so shooting the medic over here in cover, long range. Just minus one of your totals. We get to reroll one. Yep, so I need sevens. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, and the strength is two. Yes. Medic's armor is two. He's gonna take two blood and make two armor checks. He's good and he's good, so just two blood. Ow. He's dead, so it's over to three for me. Oh. He gets to go. Um, yep, he'll shoot the guy in the box that we just shot. Okay, gonna shoot my medic again? Yep. Sounds good, one shot, minus one for cover. Boom. Hits it. Yeah, four. Strength, four? Yep, two. Two. So that takes out the medic. The team's gone at this point before me, so finish up. <laughs> okay, so um, Cindy gonna throw a template of Behemoth. Chucking the either. Molotov, so it's just one card sized. It'll yeah. auto hit. It's with an eight. Yep, and it spins in a circle. You got it. Boom. So it's uh, burning two. Don't cause any damage because I'm armor four, but it is burning two, so I'm gonna take a roll during each maintenance phase. I'm make an armor fail. I'm at minus one right now for Behemoth, so he needs a seven plus. He's good. Uh, and I'll have to do this two more times. Or sorry, not one more time because one comes off the end of each round. Rumor goes. He's just gonna try and interact, take the pin out. He is successful. Okay. All right, Big B's gonna go. Um, he's just gonna snap, like so. Uh, he's considered suppressed. Just make a courage roll. His courage is three plus goes to three four plus because of the burning. He's not considered suppressed, but I'm fine. Yep. Actually, I get bonuses to all my dice rolls from being near him, so he's also even better. Uh, and now we shoot. I'll be able to hit him with it, but we're gonna go back and hit him, her, and him with the uh, big gun again. So it'd be hitting on sevens, uh, eights because of cover for everybody, nines, tens, I think, because I'm suppressed. Yeah, I pass my courage check. I'm under I'm under the effects of suppression, but I, I pass my courage check, so I'm not the minus two there. So um, it's only if I fail my courage check, I suffer the minus two for the suppression. So uh, I am seven, goes to eight, goes back to seven because of my inspiring. Uh, and it's three attacks against each. So sevens for him. Uh, one, two, nice. damage three. Gets vaporized against your boss. Mm -hmm. Same thing, cover, so I need sevens. Uh, there's two, damage three. Yep, she's dead as well. She's dead as well, and then the Bedouin. Uh, nope, huh? nothing, sniper goes last. He's just gonna duck out and take aim uh, with a, sorry, a snap to cover, and he's gonna take a shot into your Bedouin. Um, he has a four to hit, five because of cover, four again because of the boss. Hits, uh, damage one, mm -hmm. and you're anchored. I can't break because you're not wearing anybody, but you're stuck to the ground by a giant steel chain. Uh, and that is initiative for me. I'm down to three guys, you're down to three guys. Our initiative. Oh geez. It's gonna be that kind of turn. Uh, sniper's gonna go first with six. I've got four for the behemoth next, and then one for the commissar. You've got five. For the house member and two for the Bedouin and the saboteur. All right, so it's gonna be oh, Mr. Mr. Sniper going first. Uh, he's gonna take aim and shoot your Bedouin again. So hit him on a five, goes to four, hit him, another blood, and he's yep. still super anchored. I'm gonna snap just to make sure that you can't see me with a uh, house member. I'm gonna snap back, try and see the boss. I'm in the open, so you're plus one to hit me. Uh, yep. And that so means five. you need fives, yep. Uh, fours because of your heroic. No, I, that's what- Oh, that's including that, okay. So you hit me twice. Yep. I'm armor three though. And so I, I do two it checks in a row. I ignore the first one because of flesh wound. I just ignore the first hit. So the second one's gonna be an armor roll on the commissar. That's a five plus. Four plus because of his thing, he's fine. B's going. Um, yeah, I guess we just shoot your Bedouin. <laughs> Check first, see if I'm suppressed. Uh, he fails. Uh oh, so oh he's gonna God. be minus two to hits. Oh, jeez. I think we're gonna bound. I think that's happening. We're bounding off the commissar. Zavager gets to go, and so does uh, your Bedouin. No, sorry, yeah, Bedouin's first. Yep. Uh, Bedouin's just gonna shoot Behemoth. Okay. Fives. Fours go to fives. Nothing else special. Hits. Uh, I'm currently armor four. I'm only armor or damage two, so armor check. Uh, armor check. Yep. Five bucks. 
Okay, we're good to go. Yep, he's gonna take two shots at you. He's five. Goes Into Behemoth? Six. Yep. Okay. Goes six cover and then goes back down to five for medium range. You got it. So one, one hit? Yep. Armor roll. We're good. Almost I was gonna go. He's just gonna hit you. I was just gonna try and shoot you with guns. Uh, so we're gonna take two assault rifle shots into him. Okay, so minus one for cover, minus one for civilian. And minus or plus one for being the commissar. Cause that's how we do. I uh, hit once, that's yep. blood, and an armor check, but you're not wearing any. And Behemoth bounds. Uh, he gets plus one MP. He's minus one MP though for being suppressed. So he only gets to move four. I wanted to come show you the hammer. Oh God. But we didn't have the ability to do that. So we're just gonna go no. four no. like this. That's turn for me, turn for you. Yeah. Let's do some initiative and see who's going first next round. Uh. All right, so we're at nine for Behemoth and for Sniper, and three for the Kamasaw. Three, one, and zero. <laughs> All right. Well, wow. Big B's going it's, first with a nine. It's it's mop up time. It's mop up it? time. It's it's hammer time is what it is. We're moving four, uh, and then we're just gonna snap this cover to get into base base with you. Yep. B's charging in. I have to hit you on your reaction, which is four, and I have a melee skill of one. So I dice plus one to try and hit you with the hammer. My civilian brings you back down. So. Brings you back down because I'm not usually crushing civilians with a hammer, although I am from the USCR. So it's a four. Hits you, um, and it's strength three, melee one, penetrative two. Uh, your armor roll is decreased by two for this attack roll. You're not wearing he any armor. Explodes. Yeah, you just you just take it. You, you just got hammer timed. Never gets to go. He's just gonna take aim and try and shoot your Bedouin. Plus goes to five plus. Goes to four plus because the commissar's there. And ten. That's oh. a bam. Out sniper. Both tied at three. Uh, yours is three minus zero minus three minus one. So you're going first there. Highest member. You're gonna shoot my boss. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot your boss. You've used my get out of jail free card, so I'm armor three. And that's it. Four fives. Double okay. hits. All right, armor three, so it's two armor rolls. First one, I'm okay. Second one, I'm okay. Let me just shrug it off. Three against damage two, so no blood taken. And then he gets to activate. He's just gonna move. He gets one movement point. Get himself out of not cover, which was just a terrible idea to be standing here. <laughs> like that. Turn, possibly the last turn of the game. It's just Commissar, Big B, and the last one. So Commissar, Sorcery sort of Sniper, Commissar, and Behemoth. Oh, Big B's going first uh, with 10, then it's 8 for the Commissar, 7 for the Sniper, you got an 8. Yep. So I'm just going to do B first, he's going to bound, and he's going to bound off of the Sniper? He's going to bound, uh, sorry, he's going to bound off the Commissar actually. You're going next, because yep. uh, you're 8 minus 0 and I'm 8 minus 1 on the Commissar. So, I'm going to shoot you later. Makes the sense. Need 6s, because I'm heroic. I got no teams left. Hit! So one. Uh, armor failure. Nope. <laughs> Bullets, they do nothing, and then you snap out a line of fire. Sniper's gonna bound off the Commissar, as you do. And Commissar's gonna move, because uh, that's all there is. So he's just gonna go four, and head like this, and not be close to snap to cover. And B gets to go. He's gonna move and bound. So he gets to go four to here. And then he's gonna go four again, and not quite, I don't think, be close enough to snap. And we're bounding with the Sniper, so he's gonna go Four, four, and then four, and just snap two. All right, new initiative rolls. Uh, I got a one for the sniper, I got an eight for the commissar, and I got a five for B. Five, seven, zero, technically, and you got a nine? Yeah. All right, you're on first, where do you wanna be? Uh, mm, there's no really good options here. No. That was the plan. Yeah, uh, we're gonna take a shot. He's gonna he's gonna poke out. Shoot the B, all yeah. right. Double shot, so you snapped out. Yeah. Take some shots. Yep, sixes. Nope. Nothing! Commissar goes. Commissar is going to bound off of, I guess, my sniper. And then Behemoth's going to go. He's just going to set and rip. Now, it's important to note this T template does hit friendly and enemy, so I got to be careful with it when I fire because it shoots my own guys too. Uh, you're in cover, so sevens go to eights. Uh, that's two. a two. That's two armor checks for him as well. Yep. Um, just an armor five. And breaks his armor. Yep. That's gonna be Mr. Le Sniper's just gonna snap out and take a shot on you. You yep. got four hits. Boom. Uh, one, I think that just kills you. Yep. Four health, okay, cool. So he's still alive. He, but he's... you're anchored now, in addition to being armor broken. We get to go eight with him, because he's bounding. Oh. And he's just gonna snap over here. Stibs! We got nine with Big B. It's nine, seven, six, and then you got two. So Behemoth's just gonna go. He's gonna try and murderize you again. Yeah. Um, he's gonna try, he's too far away to snap. So it's a four inch from my base. So I think I'm actually gonna hit my own boss here because I'm dumb. So instead of that, I'm just gonna move. I could try and finish you off, but it's just easier for me to move up into cover. Whoop and pivot so I don't hit my own guy next turn. I'm just gonna try and finish you off, four plus. Uh, nope, nope, misses. And then the Commissar gets to go and he's just gonna move. Oh, geez, no, I'll hit him with the template again. 
Oh, no, I won't, actually, because it tees out. I'll be fine. I'll stand right there. All right, what you gonna do? Member, member's gonna shoot your, uh, shoot your leader there. Get him! Yeah. A seven and a one. Seven, seven. will hit, so yep. it's just an armor check. And I'm good. Not a nine. Mm. Round initiative. I better get you this turn. Uh, we're gonna go eight. Ten. We're gonna go he ten. I got a ten too, but it's a nine. And I got a zero for Mr. Behemoth. Sorry, a one for Mr. Behemoth. Nine, seven, one. You got a ten, so you get to go first. Let's snap forward here. Okay. And I'm just gonna take two shots at Behemoth. Uh, your leader. I gotta get something. They're, they're both armor bad. Yeah, that's yeah. no, true. And one hit. One hits. Armor check. Nope, I'm good. Jeez, I just can't feel armor rolls in this guy, apparently. Oh, God. Uh, so it's going to be Commissar first. He'll try and take you down. Uh, you're still in cover, but I could just snap. Yep, and then we're out. See all of you? Fours now, because you're in the open. And I get plus one to hit. Uh, eight will hit no matter what. Yep. And yeah. that's it. He's gone. So there it was, end of the game, managing to get a win for the USCR. It was looking dicey there. Oh. He killed two of my guys in one turn, and then I was like, I was going enter for behemoth. <laughs> It's rough when their armor gets broken because um, they, they start to slow down. But even when his armor's broken, Behemoth can't be hurt by not having weapons. He yes. just doesn't care. Your sniper, I think, was the only guy that could kill me. Probably, yes. yeah. You just gotta kind of like Take either get him in melee or flank him because you have plus one damage I as well when you flank. Get anywhere near his no, I know. His, his melee hammer is pretty murdery. Um, he's a pretty rough piece because he's very, especially now he doesn't have to set him up to fire. He just gets an aim bonus for doing it. Mm -hmm. That's a big change. He used to have to spend a whole action just setting his gun down, I think. No, he might not have had to do it, ever. He's always been able to move and fire, but he's, he's had a hard time actually shooting. It's just setting him up to shoot is always hard. Um, Commissar was just a rock star. Just oh, tucked so, so many, many rounds checks. and just passed every armor check. It was fantastic. Uh, and my, it's funny because my, my medic and my um, monkey wrench, even though they went down really fast, they were heroes too because they put blood, but they just, they took lots of rounds and they didn't die as fast as they could have died if I hadn't done all the healing and stuff that I could do. Lieutenant dies first next time. He does. You gotta kill him. Gotta kill my commissar. The plus one hit is amazing on Behemoth, which is really, really cool. So, um, I gotta say, this kind of miniature game, if you guys haven't played a, um, a miniature game like it before, a light game, which is points free and like team building, this is a great gateway game. So if you want to teach people that aren't norm like normally miniature war gamers to play a miniature war game, what's great about this is there's no bookkeeping, there's no army list writing, there's no like tinkering and stuff. It's just, here's 10 guys that are on your roster, kind of um, what's that game? XCOM style, yeah. build a team and play. Here's the mission, build your team, go. And it's a fantastic game for teaching people like the fundamentals of wargaming. Um, and I'd highly recommend it for any type of like person who's running a club or wants to introduce like their gaming group that has board games maybe to miniature wargaming. Uh, there's lots of assets to play it in 2D as well. So printable 2D terrain. Um, the book actually details playing it in 2D before playing it in 3D. Obviously I'm a 3D wargamer, so I'm always gonna play it in 3D. But that's where you use the card movement, which is a lot more um, you place the card down, you move them on, a, on the card or into a spot near the card uh, to make your movements. And it, it's a great transition game from board games into miniature war gaming. So anyway, I hope you liked it. Um, it was a lot of fun, Mercs 2.0. It's, it's Mercs, it's great. Uh, having a lot of fun. I'll play some more guys probably and play some other teams. I'm gonna play another game today and you'll get to see that in two weeks. I'm gonna bring up my Chemvar and you'll bring a different House 9 team. Uh, and we'll see you for that then. So until next time, I'm Ash, this is Nathan. Have a gaming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. My live shows are on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, typically, unless I notify otherwise. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs, um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else and most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.